Countdown to Halloween, featuring Gregory Miller's Dark Nights in Candlelight, 31 Tiny October Tales. Every night at exactly midnight, a new story will appear on StoryLink Radio's YouTube channel. You'll have 24 hours to listen, then it will disappear, and the next one will appear. Plan to catch these each day, or you'll miss one. Each story will be 2 to 13 minutes long. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to the introduction to the book right here on this channel. And now, tonight's story from Dark Nights and Candlelight, 31 Tiny October Tales. October 19th, The Progenitor. Dear Horace, before retirement I knew everyone in town. Still do mostly, but for the younger ones. Most don't come by to visit. Though, of course, they got their own gardens to tend. And, of course, I'm old and I don't tell stories like I used to. That's what everyone always liked. Not just how I cut hair, but my stories. Ah, well. You got your youth, and then you got your hale and hearty prime of manhood, and then you got everything after. Now I'm just everything after, so far as that goes. But such is the way things run. But still... Despite all the changes, I do so love my town. I was born here, and I'll never leave. That's a tried and true fact. This is where I belong. Deep roots and deep soil. That's what makes a home. I've been around long enough to know that houses come and go. But a home's worth keeping. Horace, your Grandpa Eddie was my last boy left and a good one. Me and Jenny, we had four boys and two girls, and over the decades all passed on but him. Uh, he was a good barber, too, though well he might be after fifty years' practice, and, and a cause he apprenticed done to me. Sixty-five years, and cutting every kind of hair and every kind of head and area customer complaint. That's what I brought to his teaching, and so he got taught by the best. Then, well, nigh on ten days passed, when some men up and killed him. It just about broke me, like it did you. The kicker is, they was drunk, and none was hurt nor killed but Eddie, who never touched a drop. In all my years, I'd heard of such goings-on, but never was touched by any. But now, whereas illness or accident took my other children to their graves, men took my last son to his. Same as you, Horace. I reckon that just won't do. There's such a thing as comeuppance. How proud I am to have a great-grandson like you. A good boy and a kindly one, even as you're quick and fearless to seek out justice. You know you're named after me. It was the right kind thing for my granddaughter to do. But you seem more a quiet sort, unlike your namesake, and fourteen can be a mean age. I'm ashamed to say I don't know as much about you as I'd like. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. But I can say you're a good boy. Just like your grandfather. And that deep down you don't mean no harm to nobody. Even your voice tells me that. Oh, I know what you got planned for those that killed Eddie. I know you oiled your rifle. I know you found where they lived. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but there wasn't much I could do not to. I saw you when you wound your way up the hill at twilight, amongst the graves, to Eddie's fresh dug plot. And I heard you speak your plans to him, even as you wept real quiet. And I don't doubt that through your kindness, anger and grief has thrown you off. Believe you me, Horace, no good, no good would come of such plans. Not for you. Either you'd kill those men and ruin your life, or try, then be killed. And neither will do, not for my great-grandson, not for my namesake. Oh, yeah. I heard and saw it all, Horace. Of course I did. What with Eddie's grave right next to mine. Well, I'm a tired old man. And moving ain't something I do near as fast as I used to. More often than not, I just doze. Sleep deep and in my slumber running far places you couldn't know. But after eavesdropping on you, I thought. I thought real hard. And over the next week, I made my plans. And so here I am. And I got one final story to tell. 
It's about an old man who never got to do anything for his great-grandson. So it was finally going to change that. Give him a gift, as it were. Horus, you still got your whole life ahead, and I won't have you haunted through all the years by something you're not born to do. My life? <laughs> well, that ended long ago. I can't be haunted, but I sure can haunt. I'm a bit rusty when it comes to walking. Same goes for writing, as this bit of scribble shows. Well, and I don't look so good neither, to be fully truthful. But I get along. Speaking of rusty, so is my straight razor. There, yeah, they slipped it in the front of my pocket suit before they buried me. And Alfie Jones can't build a watertight coffin to save his life. But I got it cleaned up a bit. And stropped. Now it's time to come out of retirement. Just for the night. I got two customers waiting, though they don't know it. And I'll try and give them good haircuts when I find them. My hand ain't steady, though. I may end up cutting something else instead. But you get what you pay for. So, Horace, think of me fondly. And never forget your great-grandpa loves you. You've just heard tonight's story from Dark Nights and Candlelight. 31 Tiny October Tales from author Gregory Miller. You can get this book right now on Amazon at the on-screen link and kindle unlimited users can borrow a copy of the book for free you can learn more about gregory miller and his many amazing books and projects at his website on screen if you have not already be sure to listen to our event video here and visit our event website to learn all about our upcoming events remember to come back after midnight for our next tale Oh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for Storylink Radio.